The Raspberry Pi and Pi Zero W are awesome platforms for anyone who's interested in Wi-Fi hacking and learning about Kali Linux. They even include their own internal Wi-Fi card, which allows you to communicate with them wirelessly. And this is pretty cool, but there's always been one limitation. You can't put it into monitor mode. Now, fortunately, this limitation has been overcome, and we'll show you how to make your Raspberry Pi more useful by being able to put the internal card into monitor mode on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When you're getting into Wi-Fi hacking, the most important thing to have is a Wi-Fi card that's capable of monitor mode and packet injection. Now, typically when working with the Raspberry Pi, you would need a separate wireless network adapter like this that's Kali compatible and supports both of these. But thankfully, there's now the Nexmon patch, which is a patch for the wireless card inside the Raspberry Pi, which gives it the ability to act as an all-in-one wireless hacking box. Now you can even do this on the one inch Raspberry Pi Zero W to create a tiny Wi-Fi hacking computer without the need of other components, which is truly cool. So in order to do this, there's two primary modes of getting this uh, patch onto your Raspberry Pi. The first is to just download a new image, which already includes this, which means there's a minimal amount of configuration and you can just go ahead and get started without needing to set a bunch of stuff up. Now, if you already have a Kali Pi box that you want to keep going, you can simply download a new kernel and install that, which will include the patch and a lot of other useful features, which we'll go over how to use as well. Now, to get started, you'll just need a Raspberry Pi, an SD card, a computer, and a Wi-Fi connection. But aside from that, it's pretty exciting that that's all you need to learn about hacking Wi-Fi. So when you have those together, we can begin. Now, the first thing I mentioned is that there's two different ways of doing this. So to start, we're going to go ahead and take a look at just downloading a version of the Raspberry Pi that already has the Nextmon firmware installed. Now, here's the actual GitHub for the Nextmon project, and you can see it's a, a C-based firmware patching framework for Broadcom chips, which is what is inside the Raspberry Pi. Now, actually installing from uh, this GitHub is a little bit complicated, uh, and you can see there's actually a lot of different projects that are included uh, in Nexmon, which is super cool, and some of them include the uh, Galaxy phones, the Nexus uh, series, and some other really interesting devices. You can also see what is supported here as well. So you can see there's the Raspberry Pi Zero and Pi Zero W, and it includes everything. Uh, that's packet injection, oh, here's the actual key down here, uh, frame injection, uh, monitor mode, monitor mode with radio tap headers, all this other great interesting stuff. That's all included on the Pi Zero W um, as well as the Raspberry Pi 3. Now for the Raspberry Pi 3 B+, uh, it's a slightly different story. We get everything except injection. So it's actually worth noting that for this kind of uh, Wi-Fi hacking purpose, it's actually better to use a Pi 0 W or a Pi 3 rather than the new uh, Pi uh, 3 B+. So keep that in mind when you're making the selection. Now, if you're just looking to download this um, a Raspberry Pi image that already has this, you can go to the official um, Kali Linux download page, but there's like five options and it's a little bit confusing as to which is which because they've really gone out of their way to include a lot of choices. For beginners or even for me sometimes, it gets a little overwhelming, so we're going to simplify it and just use an image which we've covered before and know works great. So here you can go to whitedoom.com.au slash reason um, re4son slash Kali dash pi. And this will take you to the whitedome.com.au page for the Kali Pi. Now this actually already has uh, Nexmon installed. So in order to use it, you'll just need to go ahead and follow our last guide and make sure to select a version that has Nexmon installed. Here you can see that uh, there's also a process to ensure that you've installed these drivers. So if you follow our last guide to setting up uh, the White Dome version of the uh, Kali Linux image on any Raspberry Pi, again this works on the Pi Zero W, the Pi 3, or the newer Pi, you'll just need to follow these instructions here in order to set up the Nextmon drivers. So if you have all that taken care of, you'll just log into your Pi, type cd user slash local slash sr slash slash reason dash kernel and then um, underscore four and then this wildcard to make sure you get whatever the most current version is and then period slash install dot sh tac x. 
So that's all you need to take a Raspberry Pi image that you're installing fresh uh, because you'll just need to download the image provided here and load it according to our guide the way that we showed you last time. So you can check out our last video for installing a fresh image and pretty much if you go ahead and use this one and install uh, with these instructions I just read, you'll be fine for using this in modern mode. But let's say that you want to actually do this on a Raspberry Pi you already have set up and you don't want to go ahead and you know start over. Maybe you've done some project and you don't want to get rid of it or you've customized it a certain way. It's actually super easy to go ahead and do this and you don't need to start from scratch. So instead, we can focus on the um, Reason kernel. So the Reason kernel for the Raspberry Pi is a really cool development that has a lot of add-ons in order to support popular things like a touch screen or in this case, using the monitor mode. It also includes a handy command where you can type uh, mon0 up, uh, all one word, and it will allow you to put the card in monitor mode while simultaneously communicating with it, which is super cool. So that means you can be connected to a wireless network and also be in monitor mode and kind of do both at the same time. And that is truly fantastic because it allows you to use SSH when you're doing these sorts of commands. So to use this, we'll go ahead and follow a couple simple commands. And I've already done this, but I'll show you what it looks like so that we can follow along and make sure that it works. Now we're gonna go ahead and use the current stable, which means we'll need to log into our Raspberry Pi and type sudo su first to make sure that we're logged in as a super user. Next, we'll type cd user slash local slash src. And I'll go ahead and follow along in an SSH window. Let's go here. And again, if you need to find your Pi on the network, you can either plug it in via ethernet or if you've already got um, your, let's say you already have your Kali Pi set up, connect it to your wireless network. And in this case, I'm gonna use Fing, but you can also use nmap and just do a port scan for 22. But I'll do Fing because it's pretty fast. So once we do this scan, we can see, oh, there we go. It's a Raspberry Pi. It's 192.168.047. So I'll type SSH root at 192.168.047. Password is by default is going to be Tor. And here we're logged into our Raspberry Pi. So we're actually logged into our one inch Pi 0W, which is pretty cool because it's our, it's our little small Raspberry Pi. So Copying these instructions, uh, we're going to need to go into our user slash local slash SRC. And that is where we will actually go ahead and download the Reason kernel and then install it. So we'll type sudo su, which we're already root user, but just following the instructions, cd user local SRC. And this is where we want to go ahead and actually install stuff. Now this process can actually take some time, especially on the Pi 0W. So make sure you have time when you're doing this and you have a pretty strong Wi-Fi or ethernet connection because trust me, it can take up to 20, 30 minutes to download the kernel and uh, actually go ahead and install it. So once you have uh, everything ready to go and you're in the correct folder, what you'll need to do is type wget tax zero reason kernel, uh, let's see, well, actually you can go ahead and copy and paste it here, but re4son-kernel underscore current dot tar dot xz. Um, so what that will do is go ahead and download this to the actual folder here and I'll follow along so you can see. Now the estimate here is actually two minutes, which is pretty good, but I've also seen this take up to 20 minutes depending on the speed of the connection. So as soon as this is done, you should be ready to go. The next step is going to be to actually unpack this file. So as soon as you're done with this, then you can go ahead and unpack it with the following command. That's going to be tar uh, xjf reason kernel current dot tar dot xz. So I'll go ahead and do this here because that's actually not the thing that's going to take the most time. Most time will actually be installing it. Now that the download is complete, we'll go ahead and untar this file, which can also take a little bit of time. And when that's done, we should be ready to run the install and actually use this on our Raspberry Pi. Now that we've untarred this file, we're ready to get started with actually installing it. So the final step will be to cd to reason-kernel underscore four and then an asterisk, so we have the most recent version, and then run period backslash install.sh. Now this will take a little bit of time, so make sure that this is the step you allocated the most time for, because it's going to need to unpack everything, install everything, and it will ask you a couple questions along the way. 
Now, whilst doing this, you're going to want to say yes to everything that actually pops up because it's going to ask if you want to install uh, the Nextmon drivers, if you want to install the headers and all the other things that will make this a little bit more useful for you. So as it goes through, uh, anytime it asks you to install something, go ahead and press yes. Um, in general, you're not going to run any problems by doing so. So once this is done, you should see this screen here. And once you've reached that point, you can go ahead and reboot the Pi in order to apply the changes. And when it comes back up, you should be able to put it into monitor mode. Now that our Raspberry Pi has rebooted, let's go ahead and jump back into terminal, connect to it, and see if we can go ahead and put it into monitor mode. Now here, I'll reconnect to our Raspberry Pi, type in the password, and go to ifconfig in order to verify that we are connected and have an IP address. So we're logged in via SSH, and we're going to use a special command that is specific to the, um, uh, to the reason kernel, which is sudo mon0 up to put the um, card into monitor mode. Let's see. All right, let's type ifconfig to confirm that this did in fact work. And there we have mon0 as a new card interface that has been created, and we can use it now for our various tools. So let's start with arrow dump ng and see if we can use it to just learn about networks in the general area. So we'll type arrow dump, oops ng, and then mon0. And here, after a couple seconds, we can see that we very quickly learn a lot of information about networks in the area. And again, this is using the very same card that we're using to communicate in order to send and see these commands. So that's really awesome. But the next step will be to check and see if injection is actually working. So to do this, we're going to use airplay ng tac tac test, and then mon0. So this will run a, a test to see if packet injection is working and verify that we've actually gotten this set up on the card. Now, there we can see we found eight uh, APs and injection is in fact working. We're testing it on an individual scale, but we can see that this is in fact succeeding. So we've managed to get this working on our Raspberry Pi Zero W and actually can go ahead and use other tools like B-Side NG, Wireshark, or other things that would need a card that can go into monitor mode and also supports packet injection. So I'll let this test run the rest of the way, but you can see that it is able to both see and start injecting into uh, the wireless networks nearby, which is really all we're looking for for this card patch to be able to make our Raspberry Pi more useful. Now that we've confirmed that our Raspberry Pi supports packet injection, we can go ahead and use our imaginations to find different ways of using this newfound ability to eliminate the need of buying a new wireless network adapter and instead just use the Raspberry Pi as an all-in-one wireless hacking box. With the Nextmon patch installed, the Raspberry Pi Zero W becomes a powerful little one-inch Wi-Fi hacking computer. You can monitor Wi-Fi with Wireshark, you can crack WPA handshakes with B-Side NG, and you can even jam Wi-Fi networks with other tools like Ergeddon. Now this ability makes it a lot more useful than the traditional Raspberry Pi would be without it, so it's amazing that the developer community has come forward and created this incredibly useful modification for the Raspberry Pi. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, I'd love to hear it on my Twitter. We'll see you next time.